decidedly mixed feelings about the genre. Be warned, there are scenes coming up of a middle-aged man in inappropriate clothing. Once upon a time, art was easy to recognise. It was usually in a frame. Paint was involved. It was this, this, and this. Stuff your ancestors could identify, and usually beautiful to look at. Then, overnight, one man turned everything on its head. Or, at least, at a 90 degree angle. Is it a urinal? Is it a work of art? Well, the whole world of modern art was revolutionised when Marcel Duchamp decided that it was, indeed, a work of art. Duchamp asked the question, how do you make a work of art that isn't a work of art? I think he wanted to take an iconoclast's hammer to the old notion of the artist as a genius, someone whose every touch was invested with a special magic. Duchamp wanted to put an end to all that. And for him to nominate ordinary mass-produced objects, snow shovel, a bottle rack, a urinal, a coat hook, the notion that anything could be a work of art is probably the single biggest art idea of the whole 20th century. A real light bulb moment. Which reminds me, how does a conceptual artist change a light bulb? He calls it a work of art. Of course, that wasn't a joke, that was actually a living sculpture. Who better to ask about his eureka moment than Duchamp himself? The fact that he died in 1968 was no obstacle to a conceptual interview. Can one say that the... The act of selecting an object is enough to turn it into a work of art. One can. It should be completely impersonal. Because if you introduce the choice, or the idea of choice, meaning you introduce, it means that you introduce your taste. And taste is the great enemy of art, A-R-T. Hmm? So did you choose a urinal precisely because of its lack of... Um so-called artistic value. That was the difficulty, to find an object that had no attraction whatsoever from, from the uh, aesthetic angle. There's no denying that without Marcel Duchamp there'd have been no Warhol, no Jeff Koons, no Damien Hirst, no Tracy Emin. In fact, pretty much every Turner Prize winning artist of the last 20 years has been indebted to him in one way or another. Depending on your point of view, Duchamp either opened up a whole new debate about art that's still vibrant and fresh today, or he unleashed a monster. As well as all that, he played tournament chess for over 40 years. Always one move ahead. So was Marcel Duchamp one of the great artistic revolutionaries, or was he simply a very ingenious prankster? Well, people divide. <laughs> So you've got to admit, Marcel Duchamp was the most influential artist of the whole 20th century. I don't deny his influence. I'm just not sure that what he did was art. I think anti-art. If it was anti-art, how come so many contemporary artists, at least 90%, are following in his footsteps? Time to meet a real live conceptual artist. Ryan Gander requested that I wear one of his special white tracksuits when we met at his exhibition in Birmingham. I wasn't sure why, but it seemed churlish not to join in. Ah, oh, there are others like me. Now I begin to understand the, the white tracksuit. Hello, teammate. Nice to meet you. What's our function as, as part of the installation? Is there something I should Your be doing? Your functions are different. Because oh. you're interviewing me. He's an invigilator for the gallery. But am I, am I part of the piece? No, the clothes are part of the piece. You're a TV presenter. Matthew Harrison is a young artist from Sheffield, following very closely in the bike wheel tracks of Marcel Duchamp. It would be difficult to make a bike wheel in contemporary art now with all the associations to Duchamp, unless you, you kind of activate it in some way by cycling to Paris, letting me tire down in front of the Alpha Tower, blowing it up and, and biking back. The track seat's a vessel for an idea. It oh, carries the idea in a way. Right. But you are not carrying the idea, you're wearing the vessel that carries the idea. <sighs> Thank goodness. It's quite simple. 
And how do I know that you're not secretly just pretending to, well, to, to go to Paris yeah. and just taking this bike wheel, putting a tyre on it and saying, here you go, mate, that's fresh Paris air for you. Well, you, you could trust me. Point is, the idea is everything. Hmm. I've noticed that I've got embroidered blood on my tracksuit. Why are they art? To explain to me um, why they're art. Embroidered on the back, it says uh, 96 cc's of Chinese air. Why do you think we've got blood? Uh, I think it uh, alludes to a, something that's happened, maybe has happened, an incident that's possibly occurred, but we don't quite know what, what this incident is or how, how this blood has come, come to be here. It's definitely conceptual. Um, well, some people might just think it was a pair of shoes. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I f personally find it quite hard to see the connections yeah. between those objects or, or to piece together the logic that might connect the objects. But your logic would be different to mine anyway. If, if you use that as a toolkit to make a work of art, then the work of art that you would make and I would make and the next person would make would be totally different. I'm getting a bit conceptually lost, in a sense. I'm not stuck, I'm just thinking, get a grip. It's only conceptual art. What, what is it that it is? Is it the air that is? Or is it the shoe that is, that's around the air? What is the thing that is? Um. Well, my, my idea is different to your idea. Well, my idea of your idea might be different from someone else's idea of your idea. It's all windmills within wheels, within wheels, within <laughs> windmills. You know where conceptual art's really big, don't you? No, surprise me. Our favourite country, Belgium. Of course conceptualism thrives in Belgium. They think it's a good idea to eat mayonnaise <coughs> with chips there too. We're all working under those things that Duchamp set up. Art's a mountain without a summit in a way because you, you aim to get higher, but you know, and you, know, you aim to uh, make, contribute to art history. You might climb up a path that an artist's gone before and find their dead corpse with some adrenaline and some food and some water that you then take and you, you carry on a bit more. Actually, I really like Matthew and Ryan's work. It's sophisticated, intelligent, and I'd better whisper it, I also think it's really quite beautiful. In the end, perhaps it's that same slope all artists are attempting to scale, whether with paint, trainers, or white tracksuits. What's without doubt, though, is that there's still a wily old Frenchman somewhere presiding over their efforts. Are you aware that some people have blamed you for the death of art? I was delighted to be blamed in the first place, because that was my intention to do something that would not please everybody. So did you unleash a monster, do you think? No, I don't think so. But you've been called the man who tried to kill off painting. No, no, I'm not enough of a figure for that. But I'm, I'm glad if I contributed to, to this cessation. <laughs> Did you ever think that history would judge you for what you've done? Oh, I don't care what the history that has. I don't even be, think I belong there. Oh, you Gallic charmer, you. At its worst, I think conceptual art's a bit like a bad joke. Once you've heard the punchline, it's dead. But at its best, it's genuinely thought-provoking. You might almost describe it as a form of applied philosophy. And that's exactly what Duchamp wanted it to be. If you're right, then the whole of contemporary art's no more than an elaborate game of strategy. But the conceptualist always one step ahead. By the way, check me. Ah! And he is